Hey, this is Mike from the One Stop Co-op Shop doing a preview of a game I am so excited to show you. Today we're looking at Final Girl from Van Ryder Games. And as of the airing of this video, the game should be live on Kickstarter, so go check it out, link in the video info. If you listen to any of my coverage of PAX U from last year, you'll know that Final Girl was far and away my favorite game of the convention. It takes a lot of the core system from Hostage Negotiator, also from Van Ryder Games, and applies it to the final girl trope in horror movies. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's basically the idea that in many horror movies, especially slashers, you'll have one female character who kind of fights off the enemy in the end. Quick disclaimer, I received no compensation for this coverage, but I do want to note that Van Ryder Games published our first game design, Salvation Road, so we do have some history there, but I'm going to be objective as always. So with Final Girl, you can get one or more feature film boxes. Van Ryder Games sent us prototypes, and this is very early. A lot of this stuff will change of two of the feature films. I polled our Patreon patrons and they selected the poltergeist in Creech Manor, but you can mix and match the killers and the locations as you like. So Hans and Camp Happy Trails, our Friday the 13th inspiration, you are gone. We're left with a creepy ghost inside a creepy manor. Let's get to setting up the game. To set up the killer, usually you'll add as many hearts as their health statistic, but since she's a ghost, you can't kill her, so she doesn't have any health. You shuffle up their finale cards. You have three, and you put it on top of the killer board. And you similarly shuffle one of their three dark powers and put that together with the finale. You place a bloodlust token at their starting level, and we will be using their starting horror value in a second when we get to the player board. Speaking of the player board, let's get that set up. So you have to choose a final girl. I think you get two in each of the feature films, so let's randomly pick. Okay, we got Reiko. She'll tell you what her max health is. You take one of these special health tokens here and then fill in the rest with regular hearts. And these, like in many horror movies, are a final last ditch attempt. When you think you're dead, you'll flip that over and it might bring you back to life for one more try. And usually the killers get the same thing, but again, with the poltergeist having no life and being unkillable, you don't need that. Next, you put the time marker. You'll see we're using a little hostage negotiator talking one for now, but of course it'll be an hourglass eventually. You put it on the uh, blue six space, which is always your starting time each round. And you place a pawn for the current horror level on the killer's starting horror, which for the poltergeist was three. Now for the location itself, you're going to do a few things. First, you're going to prep the item decks. So each location has three spaces where you can get items. In this case, you got down in the garage, over in the closet, and up in the attic. Normally, you take 12 cards from the deck. It's bigger than 12, so you won't use some. And you put four cards at each space and flip up the top card so you can see what it is. But the Poltergeist has a special item card, Carol Ann, or <laughs> sorry, it's not Carol Ann, it's Carolyn, but if you've seen Poltergeist, you know what they're doing. So with her required to be in the game, you're going to take 11 normal item cards. You're going to take three of them to be the starting cards, that way she can never start on top of the deck. You'll shuffle her in with the other cards, and then you'll take your held cards and flip them to the top of the pile. So we've got a knife, a lucky rabbit's foot, and a map available. And I can slide these up a little bit so you can actually see which location they correspond to. So Caroline will be in one of these three piles, but further down than the first card, we gotta find her. Next, we'll draw one of the many setup cards for this location. Here we've got strange trophies, so I guess some mysterious person called us in to investigate their collection. So you've got a K for the killer, the poltergeist is gonna start right in the foyer right here, coming to get us. I'm gonna start in the trophy room, and the rest of these correspond to how many victims will start in each of those spaces. People we can try to save, or the poltergeist will kill to power up. The final girls and killers will have miniatures for them, but for now we just have the little red pawn for the killer and whatever this is from for the final girl. Now one of the most important steps, you're going to create a terror deck of 10 cards. And I've got cards that correspond to the poltergeist and cards that correspond to Creech Manor. And I'm going to mix them together and again create a deck of 10 cards. You keep those 10 cards near the board. The rest you can keep to the side. Some effects might potentially add more tarot cards to the deck, so don't put them all the way away. And just about done, you shuffle up the event cards for the location and draw the top one. So we've got Clingy Victim. This one stays in play, many of them do, and it says you must have at least one victim follow you if able. So I have to kind of bring these people along with me whether I want to or not. And final piece of setup, you take all the action cards and divide them up by type and organize them by time cost. You'll see it goes from high to low down here. And you take the six action cards that have zero time cost in the corner and those make up your starting hand. And that's it, we're ready to play. So let me walk you through how a turn works in Final Girl. First, you have the action phase where you can play your action cards. And your basic cards that you will almost always have are short rest, weak attack, two walk cards for movement, and two focus cards to control the horror level. Each card 
card has three relative levels of success. If you get at least two successes, you'll get a good effect. If you get at least one success, you get an okay effect. And if you don't get any successes, you usually have some kind of negative effect. In this case, two successes would heal you a lot. One success would heal you a little, but spend some time. And no successes would still heal you, but raise horror, spend some time, and end your turn. Whenever you play an action card, you roll a number of dice based on the current horror level. So most of the time you're gonna be rolling two dice. And these are hostage negotiator dice. They don't have the real sculpts for these yet. So the symbols won't be like this. And different than Hostage Negotiator, they actually made the dice luck a little bit easier. You'll see that threes have a positive effect now. But once you roll the dice, every five or six will give you a success. Each three or four can be changed into a success if you're willing to discard two action cards from your hand. And ones and twos, you guessed it, straight up misses. You can play as many or as few actions as you want until you run out of cards or want to stop. But additionally, you can discard cards from your hand for one time each, which will matter a lot in the next phase of the game. And speaking of the next phase, it's the spend phase. And what you do is you look at the current location of the time marker, again, based on your actions and what you did, because if you did a lot of stuff, it'll probably be pretty far down. And you can use those time points to purchase cards to add to your hand. They go from costing one time for the close calls all the way up to, you can't see them here, but the fives and sixes for the best cards. You don't have to spend all your time. You can mix and match. And if any zero cost cards are here from having been played in a previous turn, you can also pick those up as many as you want at no cost. But key thing is you can never go above 10 cards in your hand, so you can't purchase more than that. And speaking of the cards you played during the turn, either to get time points or discarding two to improve your dice luck or spending actions, those cards do not get added to this little market until after you've finished your spend phase. You can't buy the cards you use this turn. You have to wait an entire another turn before they're available to purchase again. After all of that fun, the killer gets their turn. So first they'll resolve the action indicated next to their K symbol, which is usually just an attack. If they're in a space with a victim, they'll kill them and increase their little bloodlust token here, becoming stronger. If they're in a space with you when they attack, they'll take away as many hearts as they show here, although some action cards can be played reactively, defense cards to prevent damage. And generally speaking, when there's a tie, they'll kill a victim before you, unless indicated by another effect. Then you'll draw the top card of the terror deck. Sometimes it'll be a minor dark power that goes with the killer and upgrades them until you can potentially take it out. But most often it'll show a series of icons. So here the horror would increase by two, making it more likely I'll have only one die instead of two to roll. And targeting a victim, the killer will move and then attack if they reach somebody. Their movement stat and the amount of damage they do increase as their bloodlust raises. And when their bloodlust reaches certain levels, they'll also increase the horror and also unlock their dark power. Once the terror deck is completely emptied, the next time they would activate, they instead flip their finale card and just do crazy stuff to kill you every turn, basically. Now for every other killer like Hans, it's kill or be killed. If you take away all of their health before they take away all yours, you win. But specifically with the poltergeist, we're trying to find Carol Ann, Carolyn, and get out of the house with her. And this is one thing I didn't say about the action phase. For movement, you can move into any space that has kind of a connecting little connection with a number on it. And for the Creech Manor specifically, you can move to the outside, you can climb up a ladder to the window here. You can jump down either of these windows and climb down the tree and the tire swing, but you can't go back up that way. And there's also a crawl space through the pipes you can take into the bathroom, but not backwards. And whenever you move, you can bring up to two victims with you. And if you get victims to this little green space, you get to place them on a space of your choice and immediately gain the benefit indicated. And if you can save at least six victims, you flip your final girl card over and get a permanent bonus. And I'm sorry, I just realized I was using the killer instead of the final girl for all of that, so you know what I mean. All right, those are the basics. Let's find Carol Ann and get the heck out of here. So look at my basic cards, and again, you're gonna see these a lot. I don't need a short rest yet, because I'm not hurt. Weak attack won't help me right now because the poltergeist can't be attacked. So I'm really looking at my focus cards that can reduce horror. If I can do that twice, I'll be rolling three dice instead of two. And I'm looking at my basic walk cards to get me to those victims and save them and also get to the search locations where I can try to find Carolyn. Succeeding twice on the focus seems pretty unlikely. So I think I'm gonna focus on walking this turn. So let's play our first walk card. Roll two dice. And okay, I got a success and I could discard two cards for another success. One success moves me up to one space. Two successes moves me up to two spaces. Both will cost me one time. And I think I will discard two cards. Let's get rid of my short rest and my weak attack. I'm gonna rush to save some people. Now my focus in this scenario is not saving victims. I am a final girl after all, but it's more about searching, but the poltergeist will power up if I let her kill too many people. So I'm thinking maybe I go down here and drag these people away. There is a ghost trying to kill us. Get out of here. And then, hey, if I get lucky with my second walk, I can climb down the ladder with them and save two people right off the bat. So let's try that out. Another walk. 
Oof. All right, so that is two failures. No uh, card discard available here. So I've got a choice here. I can move one, but I take a damage and it'll take two time, or I can just waste two time as I trip, as people often do in horror movies. I think I'll go for the move. I want to put some distance between the victims and that poltergeist. So that is two time, and I take one damage. Now I could hang on to my two focus cards, but I think I want to buy better cards for next turn. So let's go ahead and discard them both. So I have no hand to get up to five time points. Now again, all these cards I spent aren't going into the market yet. I'll have to wait for them, but I can buy five points worth of stuff. And I'm going to look at the more basic things down here first. So two sprints, very fast movement, sound pretty good for this early stage. I do want to get some searches to start finding Carolyn soon now. And then for my leftover point, because I forgot to say at the end of each of the spend phase, you go up to six time anyway, I'll get a close call, which is basically a little reroll mitigator. So it goes up to six. All these cards from this turn become available after I finish my next turn. So I'll just have a little hand of sprints and close calls for next time. Our poltergeist coming to get us. So if Carolyn was with her, she would run away, I'm thinking like Newt and Aliens, and go back into the search deck. But since she's not, it's pretty terrible. This is a changed effect that uh, they sent me. This card gets discarded, and we draw a replacement card, which makes us go faster towards her finale. Oh, geez. Something's coming through the walls! All victims panic. Any victims that exit through a window are killed, draw an event. Yikes. So what does panicking mean? I love this mechanic. So for every victim, you roll a d6 and you'll see that the sides of the spaces have numbers on them. The victim will move into the indicated space and sometimes there is no number, like in the attic, a one through four, they'll just stay put. But in this case, oh man, if they move out through the windows, including the two people that are hanging out with me, they will die. So let's start with the two on my space. Okay, we got a two and a four. Oh, lucky. Okay, both of them go back to the trophy room. It slows down what I was doing, but at least they're not dead. Okay, let's finish up the bottom. So this guy, a five. Oh, he is killed. We'll boost up the uh, killer in a second. And the other window, a one. Okay, they go back there. Okay, now this floor will go from left to right. Okay, a five going in there. A six going up to the attic. A three going over there. And person in the closet got a three, so they also move. And then finally, the two in the attic that have not moved yet. A one and a three, neither is a five or six. So they're just, oh my gosh, that is a crowded attic waiting to be killed. I know we're not done. Another event from the house. No one comes back. Everyone in the attic is immediately killed. Oh my God. <laughs> so if you wanted to see what a terrible, terrible start looks like, this was it. Every killed person just moves down one, so that's one horror. Unlock her dark power, and two more horror. Let's see what her dark power is. Invisible barrier. You may not enter an exit space with Carolyn unless you have full health, so I need to be strong enough to break out with her once I finally find her. But more worrying to me, one, two, three, we are one away from this terrible one die area. We do not want to be there. Well, that was uh, something. Let's go ahead and play a sprint and try to get some people saved. Or heck, maybe I don't even care about the people. Let's just try to find a search space. All right, so I got one success. I don't think I can afford to discard the rest of my hand for another one. It'll take me two spaces for one time, bringing me down to five. Let's see, I could go and get these people and try to get them out. Or I could just run past them. Up here is how I get to the closet in the attic. I guess I'll still try to save some people. I will note that because of my first event, Clingy Victims, I would have to have at least one victim come with me when I left their space. All right, let's try another sprint. One lucky dice. Yes. So down to four time, but two more movement. So I can rescue both of these. They're taken off. Now, let's see, I don't want to go right next to the poltergeist. I guess I'll go back the way I came. And let's see, for my two save victims, I can put them on healing spaces. That would give me back my full health, get me two time for buying better cards, or move a space for free. I'm going to add two terror cards to the deck. I'll pull those from the cards we put to the side, because skipping that one card makes me worried I would go to the finale too quickly. And for my other one, I think I'll get two more time. I want to buy some stuff. I'm going to keep my close call for now. So with my six time, I can get all of the zeros I used on the first turn for free. And then I think a distraction is in order. This can lower the horror level a bunch. A search so I can start trying to find Carolyn and the other close call. That'll be a six overall. And then after I've bought my two sprints from this turn, go back in the market for next time. All right, Poultry guys, feel free to do a not terrible turn this time. Oh man, psychic confusion. If Carolyn is with you, discard this card and draw another tarot card. No. Roll one fewer die when playing a search card. Prior to playing a search card, you may spend three time to ignore this effect. But if I find Carolyn, it goes away. So that just hangs out up there. And man, it's going to make finding her really tough. 
But hey, the good news, the Poltergeist didn't move any closer. So let's try to get our horror to a safer level first. Play Distraction, I'd love two successes, but that seems unlikely. Oof, okay, so I gotta do two cards just to get one success. All right, for now, I'll do my short rest and weak attack. I could rest this time, but I'm not too worried yet. So that gets me one horror guard. We're not as close to doom. It actually brings me up to seven time, nice. Okay, now let's try walking a few times, get away from the Poltergeist and over towards these search locations. Come on. Ooh, okay, do I wanna discard two cards? Yeah, let's discard focus and close call. I could play the close call to reroll one die or reroll all the dice for two time, but I feel okay with this for now. So let me move two for one time, back to six. And let's play another one. Come on, come on. Okay, I'll take that. So just one, I at least get to this victim. And I'm almost to the closet in the attic, good. Let's see, I have focus, search, and close call left. I think I'm gonna focus again because I don't want one bad effect to push me into really bad horror. Okay. Ooh. Okay, I'm definitely not gonna discard two cards, but that'll get me one horror down for one time. So to show you where we are, we're at four horror now and down to four time but we're pretty comfortably away from one die. I'll keep my close call and hopefully my search when I get somewhere. Spending my four time, let's see, I'll get a sprint and be optimistic it'll work and grab the second search. And all the cards I bought this turn will come back out, including the expensive ones and all my zeros. And at the end of the spend phase, back up to six. All right, what you got for me? Oh gosh, another one. Okay, glad I added those two cards. Did that clown just move? A clown doll appears. You may play action cards that inflict damage if you wish and try to do three damage. So you do need attack sometimes for these kind of guys. After, if the clown doll is still alive, then the poltergeist attacks you automatically. If you take damage, advance the bloodlust one, and then the clown doll disappears. So I don't have any defense, any attack, unfortunately. And looking at the poltergeist's current attack, oh, yikes, it's two. So I'm down to three life. By the way, just to explain this little token, if you have only one life left, you get plus one die to all your actions. It's an adrenaline boost. And because the doll hurt me, I'm going down one. Oh, that invisible barrier is looking tougher and tougher to deal with. Funnily enough, the poltergeist hasn't moved from her spot, but she's clearly sending her tendrils of dark energy all over the place. All right, let's get my one sprint working for me. Come on. Okay, I need this, I need this, I need this, please. Okay, I'll take that. So it'll move us two spaces for one time. And I will bring, I guess I'll bring both of them into the closet. I mean, they're safer with me, right? Or maybe I'm safer with them, since again, usually the killer will attack them before me. Now looking at the closet, let's see. Discard during the action phase. For each deck of item cards, do one of the following. If the top card is face down, turn it face up. If the top card is face up, you may discard it from the game and turn the next card face up. Ooh, so this will really let me mill through to find Carolyn. But let's not forget my confusion. I'm rolling one less die when playing a search card unless I spend three time. Oh, it's really expensive. I've got two cards. I've got a close call. Let's try the first search just with one die and see what happens. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, clutch. So I get to take the top card of my location and spend one time. So that brings us down to four. And I'll certainly use the map immediately. Now do note the next item in a deck will not turn over automatically, so you won't necessarily know what you're looking at. But for the map, I'm gonna discard the knife, discard the rabbit's foot, and now all three of these are gonna flip. Okay, an old revolver down in the garage, trash can lid in the attic, and an energy drink. Where are you, Carolyn? And the energy drink can get me three time or move one space. So with that in mind, I am gonna spend three time. That'll put me at one to play search and get two dice on it. Cause then the energy drink can just kind of get it back for me. Oh my gosh. Okay, some good rolling going on. Take the top two cards of your location, choose one, place the other on top, face up, or underneath, face down. Okay, and then I do lose one time. That'll put me at zero, but you don't end your turn when you get to zero. If you go below zero, you do immediately end your turn. All right, so what's in the closet? We got the energy drink. Oh, Carolyn. Okay. Okay, I guess my whole plan about the energy drink is not a plan anymore. So get out of here, energy drink. I mean, I guess you can be on top. I don't really care. I got her. You can have up to two hands equipped. So of course I'll be holding her hand, but like if I had a weapon, I maybe couldn't have it at the same time. Okay, I have to discard all minor dark power cards. So psychic confusion, get out of here. But all I have left is a close call and zero time. And I certainly am not at full health to get out through the invisible barrier. So I'm glad I found her, but <laughs> not out of the woods yet. I'm gonna keep my close call. I'll go ahead and get, luckily I have all the zero cost cards. So I have a decent hand for next turn. And then my searches and sprints are going back in. All right, I gotta get healed and get out. Let's see what the poltergeist does. Every door to slam shut. If you are inside, you may not move during the next action phase. You're killing me. 
If you're outside, you may not enter the house in another event. Great. I ain't afraid of no ghost. Move each victim one space toward the attic. Don't go in the attic. You die in the attic. Oh my gosh. All right, so both of them die immediately. It's gonna boost the uh, poltergeist some more. And these guys both come. You are idiots. All right, so what's going on? No, one more horror. We're only at five. We're not in negative territory yet. Uh, you'll note that every time it tries to go below the track, I take one damage and I discard the next tarot card, accelerating toward the finale. That is not good when I need to be healing. All right, we'll focus on Reiko this turn since we can't move anyway. Um, I guess I need to do a short rest and the rest will be pretty much discarding to get like some sprints and some more healing. All right, come on, give me some life. Come on, come on, come on. Oof, okay, I gotta discard the two. So don't need the weak attack unless another clown doll shows up. And I uh, don't want to get rid of the walks. I can get rid of the focus. So it'll heal me one, but cost me one time. So I still need to heal two more. Down to five time. And looking at the cards, you'll see why in a second. I'm going to discard both focus and my close call to go up to uh, seven time. That's because I want to get a sprint to get the heck out of dodge. And my clutch card here, long rest. Even if I get hit again, I should have enough life from this to maybe get out of here. All right, my close call, my four zero cards go back. Okay, okay, come on. Everything was flying around. So horror goes up one, that's not too bad. Place the poltergeist with the closest victim and then kill. Oh, did I think that she was gonna leave me alone? I guess not. So wow, that brings her right here. She'll do three damage, four movement, yikes. Now, by the way, pretty important. You can move into and through the killer's space. They don't stop you, they just look at you menacingly. And you can also bring victims out of the location with the clingy victims cards I'll have to. But you can never bring a victim into the killer's location. They're too scared. All right, so I got a ton of movement, a nice rest card. I just got to not fail my rolls. So let's try to sprint first to get right through there. All right, come on, come on. Okay, one success. I'll take it. Time goes down to five. I get two moves. What's the fastest way out of here? Let's see, I can go one, two, three, four, five. Or one, two, three, four. Okay, so I'll go here and take him down the stairs. All right, I really can't afford to waste the long rest, so I guess I'll, uh, hmm. Yeah, I guess I'll play that now in case I need to discard the walks to make it work. Please, success, please, success, please. Ooh, yes, yes, yes. That's all I need. That'll take two time and uh, three health. So I am feeling strong and in charge. I am able to get out of the barrier if I go now. And I got my one friend. Maybe I won't be a final girl. Okay, I got two walks. If I can get a double star, or if I can even get a one star on each of them, let's try one. Okay, come on, Hail Mary, Hail Mary. Oof. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh gosh. I mean, I killed everybody, but yes. So that's two successes. That is move the two spaces. Okay, we run, we run. She's coming to kill us. Oh my gosh, she would destroy me if she even touched me, but I jump and you're coming too, buddy. <laughs> and with my life at full, the invisible barrier is shattered. Carolyn is safe without the poltergeist able to suck up her soul. She is destroyed. But hey, we want to see it, right? What would her finale have been? Oh my gosh, the poltergeist teleports to your space, attacks you, and then all zero action cards now cost you one time to buy? <laughs> oh, yikes. She would have just attacked me, ganked me for three damage every turn over and over and over. Wow. So that was Final Girl. I got very lucky with how quickly I found Carolyn, with how terribly stuff was going. I do not think it would have survived otherwise. I could have gone against Hans at Camp Happy Trail or Hans at Creech Manor or the Poltergeist at the camp. And again, Hans is the more traditional one. The Poltergeist is kind of the oddball of the group. Him, you'd have to do 12 damage to, so his attack cards would become incredibly important. But yeah, for now, Poltergeist, take that. I roll with the best of them. Good gaming, everyone. I'll see you at the next stop.